I know that you guys are like, hey, I love that trans critical CO2 that we talked about the other day. We see it all the time. All you guys are like, I see CO2 every day. Zach, please talk more about CO2 because we can't get enough of it because we, we just working with it all the time. And I'm here to say, guys, your wish is my command because I will indeed do that if I can figure out how to do Hold on a second now. All right. Yeah, I did it. Okay. Trying to figure out all this internet stuff and it's it's a full-time job here. Literally, it is my job. So, yeah. So I was... Like, didn't understand, like, half of that stuff. Let me just be honest with you guys. He was talking the other day. I was like, like this, you know, imagine me nodding podcast people like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, CO2, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't understand a chunk of it. And, you know, for expeditious, to keep the show moving, you know, I asked him some questions. You guys, you, you watched me struggle in real time trying to understand the stuff. And it's like, some of it I got, and some of it's like, I don't even know what's going on here. I mean, CO2, no. I don't, I don't know what's going on to I know that people say it's global warming or something, but then everybody says it's also good because of the low GWP. So which one is it? Is it killing the planet or helping it? Now, I'm just being facetious, but I will tell you this. I was looking on the internets and I found a diagram and I'm going to show you guys this diagram. I'm going to try to you know describe it as good as possible here for my friends, my internet friends. This is from the Emerson website and I can put the link if anyone cares basically. So I have this diagram that says typical CO2 transcritical booster system. Normally, if I were to hear something like that, I was like, that's something Buzz Lightyear wears and flies around a spaceship with fighting for Star Command against evil Emperor Zerg. That's what I think that sounds like. But evidently it's refrigeration. So we have three compressors in this picture. The ones I'm looking at. There's like three semi-hermatic looking compressors. And I'm just going to speak residential to you guys, all right? Because, you know, this is the best I got. But I did figure something out and something clicked with me, so I want to pass it on to you because I thought it would be nice. You may not care. Just stick around anyway. So it has these three compressors, which I understand. I understand compressors. I've seen a couple of them, all right? I changed out a few of them. Some of them are actually broken. Some of them, you know, maybe whatever. So these three compressors are pumping discharge gas, superheated gas, into this condenser. So far, so good. I understand. They pump gas into a condenser. But because CO2 can reach a point where it is transcritical, that's in the news now, transcritical. CO2 is trans, transcritical. It goes into this gas cooler slash condenser. So from what I understand now, and that kind of a light went off in my head. So, okay, so you can go through this condenser, and because this gas is transcritical, it may not actually condense because of the temperature outside. All right, that makes sense. CO2 has a hard time condensing when it's, whatever, 87 degrees or hotter Fahrenheit. So, okay. All right. So that makes sense. Sometimes going through the condenser won't actually get it to condense because of the temperature outside. So maybe it just cools. So it's a gas cooler. And then it goes into a little heat exchanger that it shares gas, which is coming off this flash tank. And I won't get into this too much because I want to try to keep it simple so I can get to the part that I actually understand. So this cooler gas slash condensed gas condensing gas goes into this pressure reducing valve into a flash tank and at that point it becomes liquid so it has another step there to become liquid so it takes two steps until unless you know instead of one step is what i'm trying to say so instead of having one step to condense sometimes it takes two steps okay so i can understand that and it was hard for me to get this when he started talking about the compressors on the subcritical side of the system i was like what is he talking about but then i figured it out i, I looked at this diagram I'm like okay there's two copeland scroll compressors on the back side of this system so this liquid is flowing to these expansion valves one of them's going to a medium temp temperature evaporator one of them's going to a low temperature evaporator all right, now medium temperature evaporator, once the superheated suction gas comes out of it, it's going back to those same compressors. Okay, that makes sense. Refrigeration cycle. So we're leaving three compressors, going to a condenser slash gas cooler, depending on how hot it is outside, and then going to a pressure reducing valve and a flash tank, where it then becomes liquid and goes to the expansion devices. Some of it is bypassed. We're ignoring that for right now so we can understand the other part of it. 
So once it leaves these expansion valves, we have one valve going to a medium temperature evaporator that's going right back to the compressors, like I was saying. The other one's going to the low temperature evaporator and then going to these two scroll compressors. Now, I don't know that there necessarily has to be two of them. I'm just saying in this picture, there's two of them. So these are the compressors he was talking about that's taking the gas coming back and compressing it from 200 PSI to like 400 PSI or something like that. So when he said they were 410A rated, at the time when he was talking, I was like, what is he talking about? It's 410A rated. Isn't there stuff like 1500 PSI or something? I was completely confused and out there on my own. But I figured it out, and I figure at least somebody out there is probably thinking the same thing I am, which is, what? And I wanted to kind of show this picture because it's kind of filled in some of the blanks. I don't understand it all for sure, but I figure we'll go step by step, and if I get something you know, figured out in my spare time here. I try to do a little bit of research so I can give you guys some useful information that we have these two compressors compressing this gas at a much lower pressure because it's starting lower because it's coming out of low temperature evaporators. Then it's going back into the suction gas for the other compressors. So it's compressing a gas, sending it further into a different set of compressors, which I think is just really interesting. I, don't know. I think it's really cool. And I think it's really cool because finally I know what the crap is going on there, which is something that I did not know before. And pictures help. Pictures definitely help. And there's a description above, which I should have left on the screen. Let me put that up for just a second. There's a little description above it. And it says transcritical CO2 booster system. This R744, which is the, the rating for CO2, the system shares the same refrigerant in both the medium temperature and low temperature. The low temperature compressors discharge into the suction of the medium te temperature compressors. So it's like compressors in series. Instead of parallel, they're in series because it's coming off the low side, I mean real low side, and then going into the regular CO2 compressors that are operating at the higher pressure. As the ambient temperature rises above approximately 75 degrees, the compressor's discharge pressure can exceed the CO2 critical point of 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,055 PSIG, which is the same as 70, about 73 bar. We'll ignore that because this is America. At this point, the condenser then acts as a gas cooler and reduces the temperature of the discharge gas without condensing it into liquid. The supercritical fluid exiting the gas cooler then passes through a high pressure reducing valve, which is the HP valve that's in the picture down there. You can see it goes through what looks like a little heat exchanger that's going to actually share some of that heat with the bypass gas coming back toward those original compressors because out of this flash tank, there's a bypass. And I'm trying to do podcast people. I'm sorry. I'm trying to describe this as well as I can. And I know uh, I'll try to remember to put the link in the podcast description so you guys can click on it and take a look at the picture. I will try. That's all I'm going to say. I will try. I have the best of intentions. But there's this high pressure valve that it goes into this flash tank. The supercritical fluid exiting the gas cooler then passes through the high pressure valve. The pressure drop produces a saturated condition that provides liquid and vapor to the flash tank or receiver. Now it's calling it a receiver, so just think of it that way. Pressure in the flash tank is typically controlled to 450 to 520 PSIG. We'll ignore the bar part because, like I said, this is America. The liquid is then distributed to the medium temperature and low temperature cabinets via the liquid line at this intermediate pressure. The excess flash gas the excess flash gas flash tank is typically diverted via a bypass valve to the suction of the medium temperature compressors, which are the ones that are like, let's imagine they're like the main compressors. Let's call them that. In warm ambient regions, a separate compressor referred to as a parallel compressor may be used to manage the excess flash gas and improve energy efficiency. So there you go. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was kind of neat to learn more about that. I know guys are like, yeah, well, that's great, Zach. We don't ever see that stuff. And I know, I know we don't see it a whole lot, but if you're like me, you like learning about this stuff anyway. If you wanna watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you wanna see our brand new video, click right here. If you wanna find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.